Hey guys, uh, I'm Jeevan Patel. I've been with, uh, you know, Wi-Fi Space for the last 15, 20 years. And I've been there at least that much or more. <laughs> <laughs> Fred Niehaus, technical marketing engineer out of the Richfield office where we do a lot of the designs of the access points. Oh, and, I, and I've got the clicker. Okay, how about that? So, again, Fred Niehaus, Fred N is the, is the user ID, how to get a hold of us. So, let's talk a little bit about dial 11 ax wi-fi 6 all of that C couple things 802.11 ax is the ieee the wi-fi alliance is the folks who call it wi-fi 6. they're the ones that do the interoperability so they take basically you, you know elements out of out of 802.11 ax and say these are the things we're going to certify for interoperability so it's important that you can have features and functionality in ax that are not certified by WFA or lack of features, things like that. This is basically the timeline. We, we started here at .11B 1999. I actually started in 1995. Barcode reader walkie-talkie going beep and we turned that into Wi-Fi. And we've you know got products basically along the whole line all the way up to the new you know, .11 AX products. And you'll sometimes hear the term hue or high efficiency wireless. This is a little bit different wireless than before. If you uh, if you think about where where we're going with it, you know, Wi-Fi 5 was very high throughput. This is high efficiency wireless. It's also high throughput, but it's a way to, to, to manage it better. So we're only as good as the clients that are out there, right? So if you look at the timeline here, Wi-Fi certified for Wi-Fi 6 isn't going to happen till the you know the you know toward the end of this year. And 2020 is when we see the massive amounts of clients showing up. So we're just getting ready. We've got products here that we'll, we'll do some session on a little bit. And the, the takeaway is to understand that you got to get the clients out there, you know, and we're trying to get the infrastructure in place ahead of time for that. So what's the difference between Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6? So Wi-Fi 5 was all about just fast throughput. How fast can I make this stuff go? Now it's like, well, wait a minute, you didn't do anything in 2.4 gig. Well, it's not a junk band. People still use 2.4, especially if you have low-end tablets or IoT devices. So things were put into this new spec for 2.4. BSS coloring, reusing frequencies to make more advantage of that 1, 6, and 11. The IoT devices with, with sleep time, Jeevan's going to get into that in just a little bit. But there's all these little things that we've put in to make it better, you know, that's in that spec. And the takeaway also is that lots of packets are small, only about 80, you know, almost all these frames are 320 bytes. So when you're that small of a packet, you know, the greatest throughput in the whole world doesn't do you any good if you're not managing the small packets well because you've got jitter, latency, things like that. So there's a lot of things to it. Uh, we've put things in, you know, see terms of OFDMA. You know, I'm going to have Jeevan walk through the rest of this slide to you. You know, I can't do 802.11ax in 10 minutes. You, you know, it's like asking, you know, who God is. You got 10 minutes, hurry up. You know, so Jeevan, get over here and show them how fast you can do that. Awesome. <laughs> I'm sure all of you should be able to do it. Uh, one hour session of Wi-Fi 6. So I'm gonna do a quick teaser for this and then sort of we'll talk about the products. So let's talk quickly about OFDMA. This is the one number one thing that Fred and I love. You know, of course, this is the one thing that we've been talking about for the last 15 years waiting for this. And as you've heard, this is the one thing we took up from uh, cellular 5G. And this is this capability exists in our APs right now. So what's the point of this? Firstly, from a Meraki standpoint, you might see the Meraki green in there. So a couple of quick things that I wanted to point out. What's the point? What's the benefit of it? Um, when you have a lot of small IoT devices, assuming they are all Wi-Fi 6, you can send as many as nine simultaneous IoT devices can communicate with a single AP within a 20 megahertz spectrum. That's what the most benefit, you know, the biggest benefit of Wi-Fi 6 is. So clearly, I mean, this is something that makes us excited because this particular wave is all about these IoT devices. And once these start hitting us, we expect these IoT devices, Fred, to be maybe one spatial stream or so, you know, in order to conserve uh, power, in order to conserve the space, the heat, all of that capability, we expect them, a lot of them to be one by one. This could be your door openers, could be your 
window connector. It could be any of these kinds of up could be, It could devices. be a phone. You've got, you know, you, you know I want to sell you a chipset, right? Yeah, here. And, absolutely. And, and the first thing out of your mouth is, is like, make sure that I don't have to pay very much for this chipset. That's don't right. eat up my battery life. Right. And all I really want to do is satisfy that Wi-Fi 6 checkbox because I'm right. selling it, right? Absolutely. So how do, you, how do you make that benefit for these clients? Absolutely. So we actually tested this out internally with our own sort of APs connected as clients. We also had like tens of clients uh, from Intel and from Samsung. But in order for us to actually really scale this out, we wanted to get like maybe hundreds of these. So we started putting up uh, simulations of this and see what can we do with this. So what makes us really excited with this? You guys heard the initial spiel of the theory. Now we want to give you a little bit of idea of what is the actual benefit that we expect from this. So the first thing we expect from this is uh, we are really comparing the Wi-Fi 5 in blue there and then Wi-Fi 6 in green. So what you can actually see from this is the latency is much lower with Wi-Fi 6. And that's the one thing that we expect is going to be uh, seen in the customer deployments over the next few um, yeah, months. Yeah, it's voice latency. It's also even video latency instead of like choppy stuff. Right. You, you know, look at the client count. You know, when you're when you're about 30 clients, it's all about, about the same. But start adding client count up and look at how the latency is low. And the same with throughput. You, if you're doing a speed test with one or two clients, you know, Wi-Fi 5 will actually run faster, better. You know, it's not until you get to up, up to about 10 clients or so that you get parity. But then look, it makes a huge difference. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So in a typical enterprise environment, like even a large office that might have lots and lots of people, but not necessarily high density, so where you have the, uh, a lot of clients as a problem to solve, what benefits can you tell us, you know, that we can solve? What benefits are there in those kind of typical Right. Enterprise deployments. So that's that's a great question. I think Thank some you. of the technology innovations that you're familiar with, you know, one of the things that you'll see in the next couple of slides is 1024 QAM. That's that's an interesting one. The other one would be sort of eight by eight. So those two things, you know, in my opinion, are are probably the best ones that can highlight because now you're there's an unsaid thing that you sort of said, which is like today, right? I mean, because today you don't have any Wi-Fi six lands out there. You can't buy Samsung yet. They announced it. But it's still like a little bit out, right? So again, same thing with Intel. You can sort of, you know, just procure some of them. So when, the point is, yeah, with you, the eight by eight, when you get AX clients at about thirty percent or more, then you're going to just see that it, it's going to just be the airtime efficiency really goes up, and and the user experience retries go down. And that's a but, benefit that you're going to see even in low density correct, uh, correct. deployments. And the reason I bring it up is because so far we've talked about high density, high density. Correct. Right. Well, generally high density. Right. That's not huge numbers. Okay. Exactly. I mean, what we are seeing is like, you know, when we talk about, uh, you know, the one by one paired up with the 1024 QAM, you know, that's where I think we are incredibly excited to see the higher data rates will be, stepping function will be much further out. That's what we are excited about, the eight by eight. Of course, the classic example I used, my wife asked me to take the garbage out. You know, for some reason, it doesn't reach my ears. If I had eight years, I look funnier than I usually do, but it also gives me an ability to have no excuse. I have heard that message. And again, my beautiful wife uh, with eight mouths repeating that same message. <laughs> now, we are talking about the power. Hey, can't drop of that pack pack pack. There you, you go, can't. right? I mean, so this is what, you know, we are really looking out for. Again, what we've seen is today, all of our testing has been in either in chipset labs or working with the Samsungs and the Intels of the world with tens of clients. But to be honest, you know, so far we've probably only got a thousand APs out there in, in the world with the, our Catalyst APs and the Meraki APs out in the beta and orderability. So we've got probably a thousand of these live. There's not enough to measure. You know, I need to see thousands of them out there, and then we can actually tell you in perspective how much of it is theory versus practice, right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so these numbers on the graphs, I take it that was purely done with only AX clients and only uh, AC clients? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a mixture, and we'll have better data as we go forward on them, but, right. but with the limited amount of clients and stuff, a lot of them are mathematical, too. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, absolutely right. If we had an environment, test environment like this, we would have just gone live in there right now. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Um, so this is the part that I was talking about in the previous comment as well. With 1024 QAM, you know, we've gone from 64 QAM to 256 to 1024. And people, you know, that are watching this uh, later on, right? I mean, if you don't know what is QAM, it's like having more pixel on your TV, right? I mean, all these guys already know this. But if you have more pixels on your TV, 
more is good. So this thing will give you much better throughput, right? I mean, it, the theory suggests that up to 25% to 30% more sort of, you know, higher data rate. Um, and then what we can actually achieve because of this is you can actually sustain the higher MCS data rates much further out. Again, this is the type of capability that we are really looking out for. Okay. All right. So BSS color is the other one, you know, uh, this is like, imagine Fred is blue and he's, you know, you are connected to him and then I am orange. So suddenly if you start hearing from me, you can actually say, okay, you are not blue. So I can just drop that packet. So BSS color, what I really look out for is this should help us get much more airtime efficiency. This should also help us conserve some battery life. Those are the two things that I really believe, you know, should be able to help out. Um, again, you know, this is something that's part of the uh, Wi-Fi 6 chipset, so you require clients to actually experience this, So, which is why we are talking a little bit of theory right now. And, yeah, but, uh, but think, think about this, okay? You know, most clients are full power. You know, I'm running full, full smoke, you know, it means my battery life is going down, I'm transmitting really, really loud. If, I'm, if you've got these, these cells that are overlapping, I'm causing contention problems. Wi-Fi 6 is table stakes basically says, okay, you turn your power down, you know you're talking to him, turn it down, I'll reward you and let you go. You know, the, the takeaway from that is, is less co-channel interference, congestion, and the clients are turning their power down. You know, it's like ham radio, you know, the least amount of power to go as least distance. You don't want to run a thousand watts to go across the street. And, and this is forcing that into the clients. Yeah. So the next part that's interesting is target wake time. Now, this is the part that's, again, incredibly, incredibly exciting, not just for us, but every single client vendor. And one of the benefits of this one is you can actually have a client go to sleep and, uh, again, the theory suggests up to two months you know, of uh, sleep time, which up is amazing. five years, believe it or not. Wow. Whether the clock will go that long in the spec. But that's it, right. It, you know. But correct, it's, you know, the, the whole goal is to be able to shut clients down, save battery. AX also lets you shut them down in groups too. I can shut down a cluster of, of clients and then wake them all up yeah. or one at a time. And the spec even allows a, a client that doesn't want to participate to stay out of it, not do it, and then later join if it wants to. So it's a pretty involved spec, it's pretty yeah. cool. I think the best part of this is like the staggering part, right? Imagine being able to say, you wake up at 4 a.m., you wake up at 5 a.m., you wake up at 6 a.m. It's beautiful because this allows even more airtime efficiency. Yeah, if your world is a coin cell battery, life is important to you, right. <laughs> you know, especially yeah. beacons, things like that. Absolutely, good. Yeah, when I was first reading into uh, this topic here, it seems like that's really gonna focus in the IoT space, if that's right. correct. Absolutely. Um, normal device, phones, laptops, really not gonna use that, if well, I'm reading I, I, that correctly. You, I'm thinking like a, a temperature, I'm, so I work in healthcare. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking like a temperature sensor on refrigerators. That, they that's, check in every that's hour or two. That's who pushed for that in the spec. Okay. okay. Whether, the, whether the phones end up taking advantage of that or not, maybe, maybe not. You, you, you know, but that's, you're right. That's who pushed that for that in the spec. I mean, okay. It's in the chipset, so it'll make its way into the software, and then eventually yeah. the phones will have it too. But uh, yeah, I think this is the part that's incredibly exciting. I think with all the different IoT devices, if you can conserve the battery of those, yeah. that would be amazingly powerful. So those are like, I know we have yeah, like we got, maybe one minute run, left. So, let's so maybe more. I just wanted to pause and sort of find out. This is like a quick summary view. Any thoughts, you know, do you agree with this? Anything we missed? What in your opinion is more important than what we talked? Or do you guys agree with this? Good, awesome, cool. So let me just quickly see if you guys don't have any questions. I mean, eight by eight and multi-user MIMO. Again, this is one thing that is, you know, I think it is it is supposed to provide half the latency, you know, higher throughput rates, and all of those should definitely help out with the eight by eight. What we've observed so far is again from the chipset labs, there is measurable benefits of eight by eight. So this is why we we are definitely seeing um, much higher throughput, you know much higher sort of, you know, capabilities are possible. What I would still say is, you know, we're still gonna wait and watch. We are still about a thousand APs out there, not enough to measure. And again, the clients themselves are still very, well, very the, the limited. Ta the low. takeaway with, with eight by eight is we know how to do four. We've been doing four radios forever in AC, right? So now I throw eight radios at it. What does that give me? Well, in multi-user MIMO, talking to multiple people at the same time, that helps me. More radios means more data to people simultaneously. Four, eight radios also means eight 
radio is hearing a weak client. So we're hoping that the retries and, you know, things, things that are problematic. You know, he mentioned this 1024 qualm, very, fa very fast speeds. If you got eight radios here in 1024 qualm, it's, it becomes a reality and not only, it doesn't only work from here to here kind of thing. So lots of benefits with eight by eight coming down the pike that, that wasn't there before.